Hey everyone, pleasure to have you all here. My name is Samuel and in the following 10 minutes I'll be presenting to you how I use Trapi in my master thesis application. At first I'll try to talk a bit about the context in which I use Trapi, then reasons why I chose it in the first place, how I use Trapi in order to implement all the use cases I needed to, and to conclude the talk I'll mention a few pros and cons. A little bit about myself, I am from Slovakia, I am developing web frontends for Jamstack agency Bjamas. I am also interested in climate tech, so you'll most likely find me tweeting about the topic or doing side projects. There are also many other interests that I have, but I think we don't have time for these right now. So let's jump in. My thesis supervisor Mirek had that simple idea initially with went something like this. Make an app that optimizes driving through utilizing data from the OBD interface inside a car. And so after thorough research, I ended up conducting an, an experiment measuring differences in greenhouse gas emissions of car drivers while providing them motivational strategies, gamification and rewards, hoping to reduce these emissions. So in order to do this, I developed an app which served uh, for the participants as a user interface, uh, as a feedback system that motivates their positive beha behavior change. When it comes to the architecture, there is a web client talking to the CMS that stores all the data around the experiment and manipulates them. Uh, there is also a component for data sync and processing with third party, which was used in order to collect the data from driving. And there is a monitoring tool which was used in order to monitor or have an overview of the experiment. Technologies were chosen as follows, Next.js for a front end, uh, CMS, you may guess already what that is, and fast API as a uh, framework of choice for Python data processing pipeline, EnviroCar as a service for data collection and their mobile application, and Grafana as a monitoring tool. I needed eight content types in total, first of them being phase as the only single type as there is only one phase at a given time in experiment. Uh, recommendations were shown to the users uh, to educate them on eco-driving topic. Synchronizations made sure that tracks were imported into the system. Uh, after importing tracks, wallet status or credits of the wallet were updated in order to um, allow participants to purchase products or be ranked among other participants based on eco-score. When it comes to the decision of Strapi being the CMS in the architecture, uh, many reasons were uh, one of them uh, decoupled nature of the CMS, which uh, allowed me to choose presentational layer, uh, choose the way of presentational layer is implemented, open source maintained and has active community. It, it provides UI for content modeling, so I expected it to, to help me moving fast towards business logic implementation. Uh, it's it, it's expected to be customizable, so I'll be able to implement every use case I had. Uh, it provides an authentication layer uh, with user permission management and access control policies uh, management. Uh, and I write JavaScript everywhere, which is beneficial for such a developer as I am. So real fun with Strapi begins when you start customizing it. And that's the conclusion I came into once I started using it properly. Uh, we, if you want to customize an API, you just uh, copy the default controller action from Strapi Docs. You modify it to fit your content type, and you add your uh, desired business logic to the uh, and into the implementation. In this case, I'm randomizing a recommendation each time it's requested. And so, in the user interface, um, there in the CMS, there are ten recommendations in total, and in the user interface, I randomize randomize them here. So each given number of seconds, uh, another recommendation is shown. Uh, nesting an API. Uh, I needed to better structure uh, my services, so nesting was a way to go here. I needed to uh, create an API for uh, getting a rank level position in order to display here in the component in the user interface for the participant. And so how did I go about it? I created a new controller action inside tracks, con uh, tracks content type, uh, add, added a new action as a handler for a route in the route JSON file, and I set an appropriate access control policies for the role. You're good to go. 
how do I create a custom API? Well, I had a use case where I wanted to verify third-party credentials of the participant in order to uh, proceed with the synchronization process. In case he enters wrong password, the synchronization cannot be processed. But in case he enters the right credentials, synchronization is in the progress. So as a result, tracks will be imported. In order to create a custom API, generate the new JavaScript file, or generate a new controller, uh, add controller action, add set it as a handler for a route, and uh, set an appropriate access control policy. So the process is very sim very similar to what we saw before, but it's a bit different use case. Another thing I wanted to do was to secure communication in between the two components that were open to the outer world. And so uh, token-based API access was exactly what I needed to do. Strapi v3 unfortunately didn't have this feature out of the box, but uh, the great thing about Strapi is that once feature is missing, you are free to implement it yourself because of the flexibility, the, the amount of flexibility Strapi has. Docs provided solution, so I, I was able to proceed according to the steps Strapi team gave, and I didn't need to come up with hacky ways of implementation. Strapi v4 has this feature out of the box. In the system, there is, uh, there is a possibility to make purchases for rewards, uh, and these, these, these rewards can be purchased thanks to the wallet uh, that is associated with the account. And so in order to associate the wallet, I needed to customize an authentic authentication flow. And uh, that was very easy. Again, uh, you just copy the default OJS controller file of a user's permissions plugin from GitHub. Then you add your code in order to fit your desired business logic. And so here, once the user logs in for the first time, a uh, wallet is created, then it can be instantly manipulated. Another thing, last but not least, a uh, use case of Strapi in my architecture was to hook another database client to the global Strapi context. Grafana has paid and free data sources, uh, so I needed another database in order to avoid fees. That was easy to do thanks to the hooks, um, which uh, you need to create config for firstly, enable them there, and then uh, you initialize uh, the database client inside an initializer function of the hook which is fired up once Strapi starts up. And then you use the service uh, through Strapi Global Context and write new data points into the database. So it was as straightforward as this. To conclude my talk, here are a few pros. Uh, flexible and easy to adapt, of course. As you saw, I was able to use Strapi for my every my use case, and there was no, no limitation. It provides practical documentation, which helps you solve your problems very easily. Uh, Strapi has plugin system and extension system. Uh, and in my case, I was able to export a entity relational diagram in one click thanks to the community plugin. So that was very time saving for me. Uh, good for quick prototyping as you have content types builder available which uh, really streamlines the process in between the content modeling and implementing business logic. Choice of a database is something you have with Strapi. Uh, you are free to choose uh, the connectors. And if you have an existing infrastructure, you, you will be very likely able to hook Strapi up. Uh, delivered on its promises, which is designed APIs, fast managed content easily, of course. One disadvantage I saw was uh, once I created it, created the custom controller, I was not able to request a GraphQL schema, updated GraphQL schema. So I think that's a matter of cust uh, configuration. I didn't have time to do it at that time, so I just skipped it and used the REST services instead. But that's not really much a, a limitation. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your time. I hope I inspired you in a way or two. And feel free to reach out to me at Sam Pitco, at Twitter, or somewhere else. I hope you enjoyed the remainder of your conference. Cheers.